How British are you? That How sounds like a good quiz. It is a good quiz. How British are you? We're well, both like, born in uh, the, the British Isles. Well, I was born in the South, you were born in the North, so. Can't really say Birmingham's North, it's a bit of a. Everything's North of Devon. Yeah. True. <laughs> okay. You're about to go on holiday. Oh, holiday. It's 7 a.m. and you're sat in a departure lounge. What do you drink? Where am I going on holiday? Uh. It doesn't say. But you're going on holiday. You're going on a plane, so you're leaving England. All right. Okay. Well, no, you can get a. You can get a. Uh... Do you want to pick a place where we're going? Yeah. Well, let's go for uh, somewhere nice and boring. Malta. There we go. Is it boring in Malta? Apparently. I've I've got sources. Question. Well, where's Malta? It's in the Mediterranean, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Okay, so we're going to Malta. It's seven a.m. We're in a departure lounge, and we're going to have a drink. And our choices are. A cup of Earl Grey, a cup of Builder's Breakfast, Builder's <laughs> Breakfast, a cup of Builder's Breakfast. So yeah. they just give you a big mug full of sausage and egg and that sort of thing, what you drink it. Unless there's a new type of tea out there, Twinings are making like a commoner's range. Commoner's range. <laughs> okay. Anyway, what's the other option? We've got coffee, a pint, as you're on holiday, you know, after all. you get, We're going to Malta. Yeah. It's got to be sunny there, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to be sunny. Or we can have a glass of orange juice. So what are we going to do? Which one? Well, on the basis that uh, we're going on holiday and we want to have a good time, I'm going to go with a glass of OJ. Really? Well, just start the day out with a glass of OJ. It gets you going. Gives you the applicable vitamins that you need to get your day going. So you're sitting in a departure land. You're about to go on holiday to Malta, which, you know, you're young. You're single. You're going abroad. Yeah. You want to get into the spirit of your holiday, and you're gonna have a glass of OJ. Gets me started for the day. Right, we'll go for pint. If if you're going on no, that, no, 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 no. If you want to have your vitamin C doses, <laughs> you can have your vitamin C doses. All right, we'll go for a glass of OJ. A glass of OJ. Right, right. Okay. That makes us more American already. So that's that one. Right. I've, okay. I've ruined this for everyone. You have actually. That's thrown us. Okay. Number two. The hairdresser holds up the mirror. You hate the new haircut. What do you do? This has actually happened to me. It doesn't it, happen to me. Well, yeah, yeah you've got no fucking hair. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's irrelevant. This actually happened to me. I was... Well, you actually the... had a haircut that you hated. and. Well, do you know when you go through the phase when you're a kid and you want to conform and yeah. all that? I went through the sort of the rocker and the emo phase and I had long hair. I went to a hairdresser's, got my hair cut. The ha- uh, hairdresser didn't quite understand well we weren't on the same page and i ended so up she wa- basically didn't know what the lead singer of evanescence looked like <laughs> did she <laughs> um but yeah i had long hair i walked out with short hair but i still paid for it because i didn't have the balls to sort of say hey done, done my hair over that sort of sounds thing. british already you're wrong there okay so we have politely asked them if they could maybe make it more like what you had in <laughs> mind <laughs> Call in sick at work for a few days to ensure minimum embarrassment. <laughs> Tell them it's great, then go and get it fixed at a place around the corner. Tell them exactly what you think and refuse to pay. Mm. Smile and nod before tipping. I'm leaving this one to you because I don't have any hair. Well, it seems as though I've actually been in this situation and it's um, something that I've been through. Mm. Um, the most applicable answer, in my opinion, would be smile and nod before tipping. Now, I didn't tip them. But I was also just sort of like, yeah, it's fine. I'm just going to go now. And You do realise that that poor girl's like hairdressing career might have got ruined by the fact that you didn't say, uh, no, <laughs> you well got it wrong. Go get me a wig. <laughs> do extensions. <laughs> Give me a weave. <laughs> Something like that. You weave your hair back on. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You should have done that. Piece it back together. Okay, number three. You're introduced to a new colleague, but don't quite catch their name. How do you react? Ooh. I don't know. I, socially awkward situations aren't my strong strong points. All right, so you've got a choice of asking them to repeat their name. Right. Avoid using their name at all costs. <laughs> We're calling them mate and hey you. <laughs> hey you, isn't that sort of like a... Sort of a... Attracted to... Sort of like, yes. I'm going to flirt with you, maybe a little nudge in the arm sort of uh, response. What if you're going to, that's like what, if you say that to a bloke, you don't no. know the bloke's name and you're thinking saying hey you is like flirting with them. Well, like it that. is. It's, a, it's sort of, it's a social convention in my opinion. It's like, uh, 
childish uh, flirting. Okay. Well, the third choice is you can guess their name. Fourth, you can ignore them forever. <laughs> Who makes these quizzes? <laughs> and fifth, make up full stories about them so that they lose their job. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Right, um... Oh, come on, we got to do the full stories just to see how how horrible it makes us. No, I think if... It, are we actually taking this quiz seriously? Um, or... you, the questions are not really leading you to a serious conclusion, are they? Well, I'd ask them to repeat their name, because if I'm going to be working with them, then... I don't know, it'd be a bit awkward um, being having a conversation. Or if you, you're you trying to call them, and you're just like, Hello, is this uh, mate? It's not going to work, is it? It's just going to be quite awkward. You're going to you're going to have to know so their name not, at some point. There you go. So we make up full stories about them so they lose their job. Answer done. All right. Okay. Okay. What's next? When did you last have a cup of tea? <laughs> um, uh, well, it has to be. Uh, well, no. These these options are really they're quite they're, they're quite definitive here, right? So right. you got you don't drink tea in the last month, in the last week, earlier today. You're drinking one right now. Well, is it a multiple answer device answer question? Just because you get bonus points if you drunk like lots. Most applicable one would have to be earlier today, since I had one about half an hour ago. Okay, earlier today. It's not very uh, isn't well mm, British tea. Yeah. Okay. You wave at a friend in the street, but then realise it wasn't them. <laughs> Do you? A. Laugh it off. It happens to everyone. <laughs> Chase them down and explain <laughs> what happened. <laughs> Oi! I didn't mean to call you my mate! I don't know who you are, but sorry! <laughs> no, cry? Probably cry, yes, that's a good one. Replay the moment over and over again in your mind until something even more embarrassing happens. <laughs> that's the British answer. <laughs> that is the British answer, isn't it? <laughs> just go to, you go to work or you go home. You just go, I don't know what I'm doing. Why did I do that? That person is going to know me. They're going to think I'm mental. <laughs> what am I going to do? I could, oh, what if I see them again tomorrow and do it? Yep, that's uh, the British answer. Or have a drink. Uh, as we're trying to pretend we're British, as we are British. No, we are British. So we're going to replay the moment over and over again. Is there something not telling me? Have you got a work permit? Do I sound like I need a work permit? <laughs> okay. You and your partner are both adamant that each other eats the last hobnob. <laughs> How do you resolve the situation? Please let there be a Star Trek style fight or something like that involved. Is there chocolate on this hobnob? Ooh. You want to amend the question? Well, no, I, just, I was just thinking, if since they were doing a questionnaire, the scenario-based questions, why not bring the the mood into the, uh, does the it, question? Does a chocolate hobnob make it even worse? Yes, it makes it a harder There's decision. There's more drama. There's more <laughs> drama with a chocolate hobnob. Is there a chocolate hobnob that's just been dipped into tea as well? Because they're awesome. You've only got a couple of seconds to decide. Oh, <laughs> you can't fight over a dripping hobnob. That's why this question is so important. Okay, we can split it in two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do what they say and eat it. Do what they say. What? Both That's adamant that each other eats. The, oh, so that basically you're both there we like, read, oh, you oh, have the hobnob. You have, have the misunderstood hobnob. the question. Never mind. It's a chocolate hobnob. Right. <laughs> okay. Open another packet so you can both have one. Well, if you were, if you were equipped with another packet, why don't you just have <laughs> Why would you be fighting over the last hobnob if there's another? There can't be the last hobnob if there's another packet. Exactly. Uh, ooh, argue about it and break up. And what's a hobnob? <laughs> right. Well, we're going to argue about it and break up because it's a chocolate hobnob. Someone knocks into you at the bar and spills their beer on you. You, A, get angry. B, offer to buy them a replacement. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> C, Say sorry, it was probably your fault anyway. Pretend that nothing happened. How do you pretend that there isn't beer all over you? <laughs> oh, did it get cold in here? <laughs> I didn't realise the roof was open and it was raining. <laughs> oh, look, oh, have I just pissed myself? <laughs> Come on, how would you pretend? Oh, pretend. Well, you can, you can pretend, but other people would know and they'll think <laughs> you're weird. 
if you were just like, someone come up to you and said, oh, mate, you just got beer all over your lap, and you just go, really? Did I? Well, did you? <laughs> well, I don't remember it happening. Well, are you all right? <laughs> well, I don't know what's going on. Have you pissed yourself? <laughs> you're in a pub. Are you drunk and have you pissed yourself? Then he goes, gets a dorm, and you're out, done. Night's ruined. All because he didn't say anything. Anyway. And the last one, try and make a joke out of it and become their friend. Well, the British answer, in my opinion, would be say sorry. It's just like, oh, sorry, mate. It's the one of those uh, sort of reflex things. Unless you're a raving lunatic and you're batshit crazy. Then you're probably going to turn around and, like, hit him. I'd probably go with I'd do what Begbie did. Have you ever seen Train Spotting? I have. But when, the guy, when the guy knocks him in, in, in the pub in Glasgow? No? Do you no. remember that? He knocks into it. Begby goes to the bar because they've just um they just robbed that person. They've got all that money and they go to the bar celebrating and they're getting they're all getting drunk. And Begby goes up to the bar, gets drinks, and he's got like five pints in his hand or something. And he turns around and gets knocked into somebody, and then they all fall on the floor. And he ends up glassing the guy. I wouldn't do that. Or, I wouldn't go that far, but mm. that's probably quite a British answer actually because it happened in Glasgow in that film. So what do you want to do? Well. If you're going on that premise, then uh, get angry. Yeah. Start running around. You probably and... would get angry if someone knocked a pint on you because pints aren't cheap anymore. I won't be that. I won't be that pleased to be honest. It's like it's just the the effort of getting served by that same person again, nice and quickly. Because service in places is awful. I, I, I think I might have succeeded at the quiz. I think I might be British. You really have just completely made your made your claim to being a Brit. What <laughs> <laughs> yeah. about the bar? What have I got to wait in the bar for ages? I just, I just want a drink. I didn't come here for problems. I came here to get away from my problems. That's the pub supposed to be the place you go to get away from your problems. Yeah. And this just created more problems. So you'd probably burn the pub down, take all the beer that's left, and go home and make a ga- turn your garage into a pub, and then you don't get anybody knocking you over. Yeah. Anyway. We're on to question eight. Your flat is freezing cold, but it's too early in the year to put the heating on. What do you do? Put on a record equal... Uh, what? Record uh, equaling. Oh, a record equaling sixth jumper. Put the heating on. Who cares if it's August? <laughs> Sit there stumbling whilst moaning about how cold it is. Make a cup of tea. And hit this, this next one. This is what it's about. It leads into the last question. That's getting a bit of a theme going here. Do you go to the pub? Um, yeah, why not? It's it's probably warmer. There's probably a fire and there's other people. When was the last time you went to a pub where there was a proper open fire? Well, we live in Devon, so pretty frequently. I suppose when it's in more built-up areas, since like I'm from Birmingham, um, pubs are up there. They ain't very friendly. Do the pubs probably look, get stabbed. Do the pubs where you come from look like on Shameless? Um. Some of them, uh, yeah. Um, a lot of them are sort of... There's quite a few outdated ones. You're talking only fools and horses style pubs. The, the, the wallpaper's what, the peeling nags? off. Really? <laughs> and places like that. You, where you got the traditional British pubs. So I'm not from directly in Birmingham. I'm sort of outside. But in Birmingham, they're all like weather spoons and all those commercial um. style ones. So it's like being in a cattle market, really. Oh. Um. Yeah, that's made me really depressed about British pubs. But let, let, we'll move on to the next question. Did we answer that question? No, we didn't. Oh right, okay. No, we did. Get angry. So no, we're going that, to that's the, the pub. pub. No, we're in the flat. We're cold in the flat now, aren't we? And we're going to go to the pub. Yeah, we're going to go to the pub because that's what British people do. I think. Oh, this one looks like a good question. Ah, are England going to win the World Cup? What, uh, what's the choices? Why are there five choices? Should it be should be two choices? No, there should just be one. We're winning the World Cup. Is that is that we're a... going to be in disguise? We're going to be in a yellow, you know, a yellow jersey with blue shorts, and most of the players are going to be of South Af- South African, South American descendant, and might have grown up in Brazil and might have, you know, played for Brazil a few times and whatnot. But you know, it's just disguise, and the English team that's going out there is actually Finland. Right, okay. Wayne Rooney looks like he could come from Finland. He eats too many pies. He could be like their troll king, couldn't he? The, the troll king of Finland. 
Mr. Rudy, Mr. Rudy, we need your help. Please come and help us. <laughs> oh. Wayne Rooney, you are the troll leader of Finland. There we go. This is a first. Yeah, we've, we've discovered it, and if Wayne Rooney doesn't like it, he can probably just... Why wouldn't he? He doesn't care. He's getting paid £300,000 a week. Anyway, are England going to win the World Cup? It's yes, we are going to win, but they give us yes. With a bit of luck and a fair wins, they could make the final. <laughs> then it's only once they could make the final, if it was anyone. I mean, would you go into the final against, say, like Germany, France, Brazil, or someone like that, and go, yeah, we're, I reckon we've got a good chance in this. What, if the wind's blowing the right way? <laughs> nah. They'll lose in the quarterfinals and penalties. That's what I said yesterday, didn't I? Yes. I did say I'd be happy with quarterfinals, <laughs> but probably not. But let's give the boys our full support. Whoever wrote this quiz, I don't think likes football or understands football. There's no such thing as supporting an England team. It's just we all sit in a pub or at home during the entire match moaning about how they play and shouting at the TV. Yeah, shouting at the TV. Um, that's they don't know football any. And the last possible chance of the answer is they, <laughs> they've got about as much chance of winning the Brazil as Scotland do. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to kick that one. It's going to be the Scotland. We, we're, we're not going to win the World Cup. Never, not in a million years. Send the under 21s, and maybe in a few years they'll all become good. And uh, we might win in a couple of years. Or We've maybe. got Daniel Suarez up front, haven't we? Uh, Liverpool's boy. Daniel Suarez? Yeah. What? Daniel Suarez? I, I've never heard of him. It's Daniel Sturridge. Oh, I Daniel. call him Daniel Suarez. But he doesn't bite people yet. No, he's not hungry. He'll get he'll get he'll get into the rhythm soon. His football is not hungry enough yet. <laughs> he's not wanting to win the trophies that badly, but uh <laughs> they don't win anything there. Anyway. Question ten. The sat in the window seat of a plane and need the loo, but the person in the aisle seat is asleep. What do you do? Ooh. Do you have a catheter in? I don't think it's very determined on age here. It's kind of, I think it's like they're actually asking questions at you for you being your age here. So, right, okay. do you have a catheter? Um, I don't know. Stadium. You don't know if you have a catheter, <laughs> so you don't know if there's a bag strapped to your leg and a pipe going into your nether regions collecting your urine. You don't know that that's there. I know your mum looks after you very well, but you. you my thigh's quite warm at the Your moment. thigh's quite warm, is it? Okay. I'll have a check. You don't no. have <laughs> No, I'm not wearing a catheter. You're not wearing a catheter, so that means that you are not a very... I don't know, is it just an old thing? Or is it a... Well, incontinence isn't something to laugh at, Louis. I wouldn't know. I'm not incontinent. <laughs> well, right, all right. Well, we'll scratch that. We'll scratch my... Right, can we scratch we'll, we'll, we'll just go for the question. Right, we so need what are the wee, options? We're on the plane. There's someone in the seat next to us. We need to wake them up to go to the loo. What are we going to do? We can either gently wake them up just to ask if they can let you out. So it's like the cinema, isn't it? It's just like, mate, I need a wee. Can you get out of the way? I'm missing out the top. Come on, move. <laughs> You can risk lasting, inter lasting internal damage by refusing to say anything. Oh, no. I saw that on a film once. It was the Jim Carrey, Liar Liar. Oh, yeah. And he said something like, it can damage your prostate. And the judge went, oh, I better go then, that sort of thing. And I actually went and researched that online. You can actually damage yourself by not going to the toilet. Right, okay, so... I we need to get onto the education system because as a kid, so he was like, "Can I go to the toilet?" No, I didn't know that. Jim Carrey had to teach me that. Jim Carrey. Yeah, he's got one of the faces though. He's believable. Obviously, you researched. It was it liar liar as well, so he wasn't allowed to lie. So he was telling the truth. Sad. Well, so, kids need to watch liar liar. It should become part of the curriculum. We can cough loudly and louder and louder until they wake up. <laughs> can you imagine that? Right? <coughs> <coughs> you get the stewardess coming over saying, Will it make please stop it? Just go to the toilet. You can try to squeeze past them without waking them up, but they do. Just as it looks like you're trying to sit on their lap. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just trying to give you a little lap dance before you wake up. Or you go, Lou? Question mark, exclamation mark. I think so, we, do you want to give him a lap dance? <laughs> yeah, we'll give why him a not? lap dance. <laughs> We'll give him a lap dance. Mile High Club, innit? Join him. Doesn't determine sex. 
does it? It doesn't no. say if it's male or female. You're male, I'm male. Yeah. It should have probably had fart or something like that to wake him up. Because I'll tell you what, there's nothing worse than someone, when you're asleep on an aeroplane and someone farts next to you. Because it's all that horrible recycled air. They don't yeah. get fresh air from anywhere. They just recycle it through filters. And when someone really lets a bad one off, it lingers for ages. Yeah. I mean, what that is like the worst fear of any flight, isn't it? It's like you go, oh, I'm going on my dream holiday. I'm going traveling. I'm going to go to New Zealand or Australia. The longest flight pretty much that you can take in the world from where we we've, are in this country. We've just left, left Singapore and someone's had loads of egg yeah, noodles. Loads and egg of noodles, rolls. loads of curry stuff and that, right? You feel the plane taking off, right? And as the plane takes off, some fat, horrible oik next to you <laughs> lets off the biggest, loudest, hot fart ever. It gets into the system and everyone's going, oh my God. <laughs> Your eyes are watering. They're being <laughs> sick everywhere. The stewardesses are slipping in it. That's just horrible. So yeah, do not fart on planes. It's disgusting. Go to the toilet. Well, we'll move on to question 11. We it only started about. with a wee, then it just got it just escalated. Well, it's a big thing farting on airplanes. It really is a big thing. Okay, question 11. You started to bump into a new into new. Co- you started to bump into a new colleague on the train to work every morning. So you <laughs> change your commute. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you new colleague? Do you not like new people at work or something? Well, a lot of people, British people don't like change. Yeah, yeah. that is true. It's, it's it's like it was fine the way it was. <laughs> not changing it, it will stay the same. Don't like change. It worked for 20 years. Why do they have to change it? So like why everyone has so much beef with the government. It's we just don't want like... the euro. <laughs> Go away. Um, so we're changing our commute or we're arriving at work half an hour early to avoid forced niceties. Talk to them. It's nice to be nice. Yeah, it is nice to be nice. Ignore them forever. Pretend to be asleep. Pretend to be asleep. That's a, that's a plausible one. That yeah. is a, there are some people that are really bad with travelling, and it's the motion thing. They get onto a train, they get onto a plane, they get in the car, and if they're not driving it, obviously, yeah. they fall asleep. They literally, the it just soothes them. It's like a lullaby to them. They just instantaneously fall asleep. I don't know how people can do that. It's weird. It's I fell asleep. on the sleep. I fell asleep on a bus once. Really. Yeah, I woke up and I didn't know where I was. Really? <laughs> yeah, I fell asleep on a bus. I was meant to go to my nan's house. Yeah. Going to have a Sunday roast. I ended up in Wolverhampton <laughs> from mine. So that's a good, what, seven or eight miles away from where I was meant to go? <laughs> Luckily, at the time... Last I had, bus of the day. <laughs> I know, it was mid-afternoon, but it was on a Sunday, so it was hourly. So I went to Wolverhampton and I got off and was just like, right, okay. And at the time, I really needed a toilet, so I had to find a toilet. Then went and got a drink, and then got on the bus back. The whole experience was just so much traumatising. And I vowed never to fall asleep on a bus again. I've, like, just... Never fallen asleep no. on a bus again? <laughs> no. No, okay. So, that, uh, pretending to be asleep is a dangerous one in case you do fall asleep. So, I wouldn't do that. You won't fall asleep then? No. Okay, we can whack that one off. Uh, change your commute. That would be quite difficult. Yeah. That would be quite difficult because there's only one way into work for us. It's on one road, so it's not like we can go, I'm going to go through the fields. Come on, let's run. You could take the bike. You could ride a... No. Or tracker. No, I couldn't imagine doing a 14-mile commute on a bike every morning. you got to come back as well. Oh, yeah. When it's cold in the dark. Yeah. No. Uh, you probably... I'd probably actually go to work earlier. A little bit earlier, so I wouldn't yeah. have to see them. Yeah, fair enough. We'll do that. We'll do that. That's based on me, really. And okay. Oh wow, we've got our um. We've got the okay. final answer. No, it's not the final answer. We've um, we've we. How British are you? We got. We are as British as a Dalek serving afternoon tea. <laughs> that would be pretty fun. A oh. Dalek serving afternoon tea, like you like. Be like tea, sugar. I don't want any sugar. Exterminate. 
<laughs> why would you? I don't. Is, got, is, there, is there any description on the photo of why we got that at all? Or is... uh, it says there are many more British or awkward than you. The Empire is lucky to have you. Oh. Well, of course they're I feel lucky. valued now. Yeah, well, yeah we, we don't want to talk to people. Um, we believe that all problems can be solved in the pub. <laughs> we uh, really don't believe that England are going to do any, anything in the World Cup. And yeah, we're just a bunch of pessimistic, horrible people. Yeah, fair enough. It's a very nice picture of a Dalek, though. Look at it. Oh. He's got an apron. Yeah, he's got an apron on. Right, so everyone, imagine a Dalek with an apron. Oh, I'll put the, I'm going to put the picture up. Oh. I'll put the picture up. Cute Dalek serving tea. There it is. Look at him. What a little blue light. Oh. I've never. Look at, his, look at the teapot. I remember when look I first watched Doctor Who, and I've never heard a person say, look at that Dalek. Ah. Oh. <laughs> They were terrifying. No, they were. When I was a kid, when I watched the original Doctor Who, because I don't watch it now, because I think it's gone on too long. Do you not realise that Doctor Who is just a cheap, nasty sci-fi show that that it it's just horrible. Yeah, I know, but I watched it as a kid, it, CG, and I was I was terrified. Really? When I watched, I saw a Dalek for the first time. I was terrified. Can you see that? What that is? It's a baked bean can with it's a pair of a, wheels. It's not. It's a It's a wheelie bin. It's a flip bin you have in the kit. There's the lever. Look, you pull it, push the lever up, opens up, throw the tea bags in. There you go. Shut it down. It's a bin. How we should this? invent this. We should invent... They actually have got them. Oh. You can actually get a Dalek bin. Well, you're about as much fun as Buzz Killington. No, but I'm just saying you can't do it. No. It's already been done, but they're not scary. But when I was a kid, what, were we talking when I was four or five? Because when the original Doctor Who came out... So you were scared of bins when you were four or five? Bins are big when you're four or five. Really? Well, a full, full on wheelie bin, you get put in one of them, you're never getting out. You can't reach the lid. Never thought of it like that. Maybe you, you can tilt the bin. Yeah, in fairness, they're quite tall, aren't they? They're like four foot high. Yeah, exactly. When you're a kid, they're, they're terrified. Well, if you're a three, a three foot kid... Yeah. You put your arms in the air. Maybe you have to be shorter than three foot. Hold on. Well, I was I was never the tallest person. I was always the shortest person in my class. If you're like four, you're going to be about two and a half feet high. Yeah, if you fell in a wheelie bin, you're trapped. The only thing you could do is rock the bin side to side. And maybe it What if over. it's next to two full bins? There's one on each side, there's a full bin. And basically, you've gone, mum said to you, Go take the rubbish and put it in the bin, and you do it. But the pretty is... irresponsible thing for a mum to do. Four year olds go and tackle the bin, and like get the lid open. How would you reach it in the first place? A little step ladder, All right. or a little stool. Right. You know those um, yeah, little step ladders. Yeah, that's what you want. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, we're British. We're a Dalek. We're serving afternoon tea. Happy days. 